I got my degree from the University of Zimbabwe. And at the time that I went to university, the government in Zimbabwe had um, come to the recognition that uh, more men than women were going for tertiary education. There were more men than women going for uh, education at degree level. Well, at all levels, actually. From primary school to secondary school to university level, there were more men than women in education. So to address the imbalance, to address the perceived imbalance, the government impl implemented a system of affirmative action so that women could enter university with less qualifications. At the time, there was only one university in the whole country, the University of Zimbabwe. So it was quite the thing to go to university because you were one of a few people that could make it. Think of the prestige of going to Oxford or Cambridge, but uh, um, there's only one university in the whole country. Since then, there have been a few other universities opened. Uh, National University of Science and Technology, Africa University, I think it's called. No, I can't remember. There are a few other universities. There's a church-run uh, university as well. But um, I'm going off track here. There was uh, this system of affirmative action. This obviously did not go down well with men who were overlooked because they were saying, I've got the qualifications to get into university. And yet I am being overlooked because I'm a man, because I'm a man. And <laughs> those men that got into university would actually then say to women at university, uh, you just here because you're an affirmative action hire, you're an affirmative action recruit, you, you, you weren't clever enough for university. The government had to step in uh, on your behalf. You're taking the place of someone else far more worthier. And I, I, I can understand the, the men being upset over that. At the time, I thought, eh, whatever. But now I'm like, yeah, that was unjust. That was unjust. But now I see uh, similar, I feel similar about Doctor Who. I feel similar about, about Doctor Who. Uh, the latest incarnation, which is the 15th, 14th, 15th, which is by the Rwandan-born actor, British actor called, what's it called? Nguli, Nguli Gatwa, something like that. I can't remember his name. Nguli Gatwa. Uh, so the, the latest iteration of Doctor Who is ticking all the diversity boxes, the diversity, equity, uh, individuality, no, diversity, equity, inclusion boxes. So the new Doctor Who is black. They've gone better. Doctor Who, which was created by heterosexual men back in the 60s, a Canadian and a Scottish man has been deemed too heterosexual, too white, and it's being uh, reimagined. So we started off with the female Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker, uh, I think that's the name of the actress, Jodie Whittaker. I'm going with Jodie Whittaker. But now they decided to go one better. Doctor Who is now black. But not only that, he's also gay. He's the gayest Doctor Who ever. Um, being uh, being portrayed by Nkuli, Nkuli, Nkuli Gatwa, who is uh, queer. Um, so... That's affirmative action for you. That's affirmative action for you. The BBC is no longer hiring talent on the base of talent. It's hiring talent on the basis of what diversity boxes do you tick. So think of Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since we got our, got rid of Arlene. I can't remember the name of that choreographer. Arlene somebody. Uh, they got rid of her because she was too old as a woman. You know, she was past a sell-by date as a woman. They needed fresh blood, uh, eye candy. So they got rid of her. And now they have got a gay man, last I checked anyway, uh, and a woman, uh, a, bl a black woman. So a black gay man. Well, of course, there's the original queen. Uh, what's his face? It's been a while since I watched Strictly Come Dancing, but it's been a while since I watched Strictly Come Dancing, but it's the gayest show ever. 
whether it's Bruno Tonioli or uh, the tall guy or the latest, which is the South African man who is gay. And the same is happening with Doctor Who. Uh, you would think by the preponderance of gay people in showbiz that they are the, the population of gays in the general population is like 70%. But there we are. BBC diversity hires affirmative action. Let's go find a black person who's gay for the role of uh, Doctor Who. And I suspect if this carries on and BBC is happy with the figures, viewing figures that are tanking, and BBC is happy with uh, 100% uh fresh certified fresh reviews from rotten tomatoes but it's carefully selected reviews so that it's a hundred percent like you guys are working overtime to make sure that doctor who gets positive reviews it's it's rubbish and the viewing figures tell the truth the viewing figures tell the truth you can get mr gatwa on every talk show praising him praising his queerness praising his portrayal of Doctor Who, but the views don't lie. The viewing numbers, the viewing figures don't lie. People don't watch, don't want to watch Doctor Who. And if this carries on, I suspect BBC, uh, now that they're working with Disney, will continue to flog this horse in spite of uh, dwindling view viewing figures, in spite of uh, losing the goodwill of people that have been faithful Doctor Whoites. Is that what you call a Doctor Who fan? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, in spite of this, I'm sure BBC will persist. They will persist uh, with flogging this horse, with pushing this agenda. And in no time, we will get a Doctor Who who's, I don't know, black or half black, half Asian, uh, disabled, uh, queer, and will be prancing around. No, they won't be queer. They, they, they the doctor, will be uh, uh, non-gender, non-gendered, I should say. And they will have Z pronouns. <clears throat> and they'll be prancing around in a frilly um, skirt. Oh, no, that's been done already. That's been done already.